Hi, how you doing? You know, I should um, I should probably check the mirror before I go live. My hair is kind of a mess today. Um, oh well, who cares, right? Who cares? Thanks for being here. I'm Tim Carter. This is thebuilder.com and the live stream. It is. It's hard to believe. I can't believe the month has gone by that fast. It's pretty amazing. Uh, if you have a question about the live stream, about anything about your home, go ahead and put it in the chat. You know what to do. You have to have a YouTube account to do that. You don't have to have a video uploaded to have a YouTube account. It's so simple. Uh, there appears to be a little bit of latency in the video screen I'm seeing. I hope there's no latency while you're watching. Uh, Josh or Al, if you could let me know if... Uh, the video looks pretty good. The stream, I'd appreciate it. Let me know how it looks. I have got a lot of news to share. Uh, we, um, I almost don't know where to start, but I'll tell you what I want to do really quickly before we get going here, because I, um, oh, this is really important. I'm going to tease this for tomorrow, and I'll talk about it a couple of times. So tomorrow, the live stream is going to be about this. And so um, this brand new tape measure and wait till you see it tomorrow. So I'm just letting you know. Um, anyway, I um, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Spend a good five minutes on it. And I think you're going to be blown away. The uh, thing I want to share is um, we're going to be talking today about uh, my newsletter from yesterday where I did a quick survey. I did, it was kind of last minute. I had the idea on Saturday and I want to share the survey results with you. I was kind of astonished by them. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, how I got an email on Friday night from a long-term subscriber to my newsletter. And um, he had watched a couple of streams last week and he was not a happy camper. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, I got a really great email yesterday from a woman. Her name's Elaine. She uh, gets the Ask the Builder newsletter. And uh, she she was in the U.S. Navy. And she wrote this incredible story. And I'm not going to share all the details with you. But it was such an inspiring email. And so we have a lot to talk about. And also, we did our live Zoom call last Friday. Josh, uh, you were there. Um, what did you think of it? Uh, I thought it was a huge success. Uh, so we're going to be doing more of them. In fact, that's another thing I want to talk about is after that call was over, I looked into, you know, a paid version of, of, of the different video conferencing systems. And I want to ask about those Uh want to get some feedback. So we have a lot to do today. Let's get started. Uh, because those people who are here who want to know about front porch, uh, how to build a front porch and all that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. I actually used that topic today for my syndicated column. And the way I started the column out, really kind of interesting, uh, it, the column will be available on the website tomorrow in the morning, uh, is I had the really good fortune in to you know, cut my teeth in the construction industry in Cincinnati, Ohio. And that was back in the 1970s and the 80s. And Cincinnati, if you've never been there, you know, of course it is um, east of the Mississippi River. Uh, the town was founded in the 1700s, but it really, it really got going in the um, early 1800s. And then what happened is after the Civil War, the city really started to expand up out of the valley and up onto the uh, plateaus. And uh, up on those plateaus, there are uh, there, there was a huge housing explosion and growth in the city in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. And I happened to live in the two houses that were built in that time period. And I, um, I rehabbed them both. And then I did a lot of work on those houses. One thing in common for many, many, many of these homes 
in, built in that time period were magnificent covered front porches. And um, I kind of I kind of talked in a column, really, I, I kind of waited till the end. It was really an interesting column, the way I structured it. Um, I actually think the front porches um, were the social media platform, you know, a porch being a platform of the time period. In other words, people, people they were out on their front porches. Uh, they were there to be seen and to see, to see what was going on. And, uh, you know, talk with their neighbors, talk with people that were walking by. And uh, so I thought that was really interesting. But I, I, I went on to talk about the practical natures and also, you know, how they really do a good job of protecting the house and especially the front door. You need to understand that way back when, I'm going back 100 years ago, you know, the architects knew how to design doors and get them to shed water, but they they didn't have the fire by ash, the pro protruded thresholds. They didn't have the superior weather stripping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And if you wanted a front door to last, you needed to keep it dry. And a covered front porch would do that. Uh, I then went on to explain in the column uh, how we I built the one. I didn't build it, but how I specified it in the plans for my daughter's new home. So um, so what you want to do, in my opinion, uh, you'll want to uh, read that column on the website when we load it in the morning. And I will probably share the link tomorrow to it here. Um, let me get caught up. Uh, all right. Hey, Louise, how you doing? Um, Josh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it went really well, the Zoom call. Uh, hello, Will. Uh, <laughs> and of course, Lorraine, uh, it's great to see everybody here. And Steve, great, great you're here. Um, so, crutch word. <laughs> So that's it with covered front porches. Uh, the really, really, um, and and the just so you know, the the old the architects and the builders of old, they were so smart because they knew, especially with the ones in Cincinnati that had wood floors. Many, many of the wood uh, porches in Cincinnati had wood decking. I mean, and they, I'm talking about wood that got wet, that that lasted for 50, 60, 70 years, and of course they painted it, and and that was part of the reason. But they also oriented the wood, in a, you, you know, so that the strips of wood, it was all tongue and groove, uh, that they were um, perpendicular to the front of the home. And also that the porches had slope to them. So any water that got on the porch would not sit on the wood. It would roll off, uh, you know, and, and drain away from the porch. It's really, really smart. Really, really, really smart. Okay. I now want to talk a little bit about, remember, if you have any questions about anything, uh, just put it in the chat. Happy to talk about it. Let, let's first though talk about that um, subscriber of mine. I'm sure he's not here. <laughs> yeah. uh, if he is, he, he'd be lurking. He, he would never admit that. He would never admit that he's here. Uh, that would, that would, that he'd be fill, filled with shame if he did. Okay, good. I'm glad you enjoyed the Zoom call. It, it was really good. Uh, we're going to have, the next one's even going to be better. Um, because what I'm, I want, you know, Lorene was there, Steve was there, Will was there, Josh was there. Um, what I propose, and I just want you to think about, you don't have to answer now, but if you want to answer now, you can. I propose that calls moving forward, that we have a little bit of an agenda. You know, we still can have a lot of flexibility, but let's, um, let's pick a topic or two that we could maybe dive into that might be of general interest. And, um, you know, that way, I don't know. I just think it might be interesting if we do that. But I am willing to do whatever you want to do. Uh, oh, good, Al. Yes, bingo. <laughs> you just read my mind. Uh, all right, here's what happened on Friday. On Friday, I received an email. Uh, I call it a kick to the curb email. Uh, I've been kicked to the curb a couple of times in my life, more than a couple of times. And... Uh, uh, anyway, this was from a gentleman who I've known, boy, I don't know, we could go back 15 years. I mean, it could, it's been a while. And, you know, he, he would email me with questions. I was very generous with my time, uh, years ago. In fact, he was on the live stream. If you remember a week or two ago, he was the gentleman that was talking about, uh, 
suing his builder and he won, but he had $45,000 worth of attorney's fees. And what I let, what I subsequently found out after the live stream, he emailed me and gave me all the facts. Um, he only broke, let's see what happened. I'd have to get the email. Let me put it this way. He did not make any money in the lawsuit. He barely got enough money to cover his attorney's fees. All right. So he, he really lucked out. Uh, yes. Topic list. I agree. Okay. So, um, uh, anyway, he crutch word. <laughs> I, uh, I hate those things. This gentleman was, you know, as, as, as it has been happening, you know, I will go in his opinion, off topic and stray into the illness, stray into, um, I, he, he called it politics, but I, I don't think so. I mean, I know Steve wants me to go there all the time, but, um, you know, in other words, if I start talking about inflation, uh, that's a, that's a, a, a bipartisan issue. That's not out. That's not one party or the other. That's, that pulling all those levers, although it can happen. But he basically, you know, kicked me the curb, told me he uh, <laughs> he didn't want to have his idols, or that wasn't really the word, although it, it's kind of many, I guess I was an idol to him, I don't know, or, you know, rock star, whatever, blah, blah, blah. He didn't want, he didn't want to hear what I have to think about those things. Okay, so he did the right thing. He not only... Did he say he wasn't going to um, watch any more live streams? He said he's unsubscribing from the newsletter, which I think is really kind of interesting. Uh, when, when you stop and think about this. Um, but, but what it tells you is that it's just another prime example of what I've said in the past. But I think a lot of people disagree with me on this. And that's OK. It's OK to disagree. Um, that we're at war here in America. Steve, I don't know about how it is in the UK, but I'm telling you, here in America, we are at war. And it's a winner-take-all civil war. That's what's in play. And, and, and when you have somebody who feels that strongly about just me, you know, I it, you know, it would be different if I was spending the time on this live stream. Either I could do one of two things. I could go, Trump, 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 Trump. He's so great. Blah, blah, blah. Orange man is great. Or I could say the exact opposite about President Biden. But that's not what I was doing, you know? So anyway, so so when you just lightly touch up against that, you know, those hot buttons, like I like I do from time to time. So it it pushed him so, it, it, it was it. He just said, I'm done with you. So for So think about that. For him to cut himself off, each week in my newsletter from tips that could easily, one tip of mine could easily save you $5,000, maybe $10,000. But he says, nope, I don't want any of the flipping tips, man. Don't want them. All right. So now I have done the same thing over the past two or three years with companies. So I, I've done what he did. And I understand his reasoning. I've done the same, like I did the same thing with the NFL, um, with other companies about their whole acceptance of, of all this woke stuff. It's like, I'm, I don't, you don't get my money anymore. All right. So anyway, um, I get it. But I just think, um, I just don't think I've really strayed that far. But maybe you think I have. So at least he did. So that's, um, that's what he did. Um, you're right. I will never defeat the crutch words. They just, they just, poof, poof. I mean, they just come out. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole Western world is at war. Why didn't he ask a question instead of complaining? Um, well, so Will, I think the reason is because well, that's a great question. And it and it goes to the heart of the matter. 
because um, the illness of politics, religion, those are really deep philosophical um, places in everyone. I mean, I know they are for me. And you can see it. I mean, I can see it in people all the time. I mean, they, even though they're not, they don't have a degree in immunology, they think they're a flipping expert on the illness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but they don't exhibit much common sense or critical thinking. But that shows you the power of psychology. We, we talked about that, I know, a month or so ago. Uh, so he, he, I just pushed one of his buttons and he, you know, he just, you know, he's got a, um, I think he's an engineer too. I think I'm not positive, but if you're, if you know many engineers and I know quite a few of them, they're really interesting people. And I'm glad we have a lot of engineers because we need them, but many of them, not all, they are things with engineers are black and white. There's not a lot of gray area, you know, in the middle. I mean, very little. It's like black or white. And and that's how this gentleman made his decision. It was a black-white decision. I don't mean race. I just mean, you know, I I stepped over the line. Uh, I get one bite off the apple with him. He, he I, I got his bite or he got his bite. That's it. I'm done. So anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't. At my age, I, and because we're at war, because I am so deeply worried about um, the future of our country and which is the future of home improvement, all right? Uh, so I'm I'm willing to take that hit. I'm willing to take that coll collateral damage. So anyway, let me get caught up here. Um, yes, you're right, Lorreen. He That's exactly right. It was, a, if you read his email, um, he, you know, he was just basically the messaging was, he doesn't feel I should mix. Um, here's what's funny about it. And, and I didn't respond to him. In fact, I'm going to tell you what I responded. He was basically saying, Tim, you should not be mixing business with your personal feelings. <laughs> but what I wanted to, I wish that I could have been um, in, in a face-to-face you know, discussion with him and say, well, um, so are, do you think it's a good idea for the NFL to have given the Black Lives Matter people $50 million? Or do you think it was a good an agreement that Target did the right thing by uh, having transgender bathrooms? And if he answered yes to that, well, then you could see he's a hypocrite. All right. So, but, but I didn't want to get into that discussion with him in email. What I did do, though, you'll you'll like this. I thought about it. I, I didn't respond. Sometimes I I'm I'm quick. I'm like a ten tons of dynamite with a one inch fuse. But this this time I I controlled myself because I th thought you know what, it's got to be the right response. It's got to be the right response. And I'm never going to change his mind. And I'm not going to go back and beg him to come back on the list. So I slept on it. And the next morning I I got up. I was drinking my cup of coffee here Saturday morning and uh, reminiscing about the Zoom call. It was a good time. I was just kind of relaxing. And I uh, go onto YouTube and I find uh, one of the original copies of Rory Rogers and Dale Evans. They were husband and wife singing Happy Trails. <laughs> so I copied the URL and all I did is responded and sent him the URL to that video. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. All right. Let me get caught up here. Um, Al says, the only thing I want to ask Steve is how buildings are different, built different in the UK from the US. Uh, if he's not answering that, yeah, he just did. He's exactly right. They use a lot more masonry uh, because they ran out of timber. They, they deforested the UK back in the, I don't know, Steve, I'm guessing the 13, 1400s. You guys cut down all your trees. You know, and, and it's not a big company to be country to begin with. So the country grew and there's no way you could grow enough timber, you know. So anyway. Um, Lorene says the difference between you and the NFL is they have cost a lot of money and their entertainment. People spend hundreds of dollars to have players pushing. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. But that's 
you know, think about that, Lorraine. That's the same way in, um, you know, how people idolize rock stars or whatever, which is why Twitter is a really good place for those people. You know, I mean, if you, if, you know, Twitter is a great place. If you want to build a tribe, that's the place to do it, man. Let me tell you. And like Joe Rogan is doing on Spotify. <laughs> Wasn't that great last week? I'm sorry. We're not doing much home improvement. I know that. Uh, here, my wife and Kathy and I were talking about this. Here's um, Neil Young. I mean, Neil Young, a rock star from the 1970s. <laughs> and and then Joni Mitchell. And then they, they come out and say, hey, it's either Joe Rogan or us, man. <laughs> Spotify kicked Neil Young to the curb so fast, you could hear the thing clink all around the world, man, that can. Like, idiots. These people live in a flipping bubble, man. They, they, he still thinks he's a famous guy. Ask my son. You know who Neil Young is? I don't have a clue, Dad. You know who Joni Mitchell is? Who's that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We're at war. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, let me get caught up here. <laughs> Steve asked, what is the NFL? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, oh, here's something interesting about the NFL, Steve, to show you how twisted the uh, tax the tax law is here in America. Um, you and I'm not an expert on this. I'm not I'm not a, a CPA, an accountant. But evidently, um, I like Steve, you could come over here to the United States and you and I could start a company and we could um, we could file with the with our internal revenue service. They're the people in charge of the taxes, the tax collectors. And we could fill out a form and we could say, listen, S Steve and Tim, S&T, S&T company, we're a nonprofit, man. We are a flipping nonprofit. Uh, that's the type of business we are. And, and as a result, then you don't, you don't get to tax our profits. We're a nonprofit. All right. <laughs> so the NFL here in America is registered as a nonprofit corporation. <laughs> they make billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> it, it's, it's such a sham. It's it's truly the Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, oh, well. Um, I uh, yes, I did. I didn't understand everything, but so you know um, what I'm going to do in the future when I don't. I'm going to ask someone else on the call to interpret for me, and the reason why is. Um, I've got a uh, pretty, first of all, I have occupational hearing loss um, that I've had for years. I, I've, I'm doing a really good job of protecting my ears now whenever I am around loud stuff. But I also, what happened as a result of that, I have, uh, I, I, can, I can have bad tinnitus. And I think on Friday, my tinnitus was running about a six or a seven. And I've since learned over the past four years pretty much how to kick it to the curb. Uh, that's a whole nother story on another day. Um, and it really worked. I, I never thought about it. Um, I, I had a conversation. She, she was a, with an, a doctor of audiology and she was a ham radio operator. And we were at a, uh, an event up at Mount Washington and, and we camped out the night before because it was a really early event. We had to be up and on the mountain at four 30 in the morning. And I don't know. I just, in the conversation, I just asked her, I said, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm always curious about you. I'm so curious. And I'm I, I'm that way with anyone. And so uh, one of my questions always is, I mean, if, if you if you look to be a younger person, I, I'll always ask you, what do you do for a living? Or if you look like you're retired, I would I would say, well, you know, what what did you what, what, tell me about your career? Because I'm just interested. And she says, oh, I, I'm a doctor of audio, audiology. I said, are you serious? She said, oh, yeah. She said, my office is down in Laconia. Really? I said, well, I've got a question for you. Do you mind if I ask you? 
And she said, no, go ahead. What is it? I said, oh, I've got bad tinnitus. I said, is there any medication or something I can take? And she just said, she went like this, stop. She said, I'm going to tell you how to, to stop it. I'm going to tell you how to stop it. And so she took about 20 minutes, but I'm just going to tell you real fast how to do it. I'm going to give you a summary. The tinnitus, it's really interesting. Um, your um, It's tied to the flight fight response in your brain, which is a deep, deep, deep thing in your, your, um, your um, brainstem. Meaning if you are sitting out in a pasture and it's just, you're alone, beautiful sunny day, you're just kind of gazing off to the horizon, but all of a sudden in your peripheral vision, something moves. Guaranteed, guaranteed you're going to turn your head to see what it is. Okay. That is, that comes from like millions of years of, of um, survival <laughs> because a million years ago, one of your ancestors, had they not done that, um, they would have been lunch for something. All right. She says, what you have to do is if you, if you start hearing the tinnitus during the day, and all of a sudden, you start to concentrate on it, which is the same as looking, turning your head to see what just moved. That is telling your brain that the tinnitus is, 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 um, uh, it's, it's something that's bad and that it really needs to worry about it. And she said, you have to program your brain the exact opposite way. She said, if all of a sudden the tinnitus is a bad thing, you start hearing it and it's bothering you, you need to ignore it, which if you've never had it, let me tell you, it's hard to do that. But you then, you ignore it by immediately doing some task that requires concentration. For example, you could start to sing, you could uh, sing out loud, you could, um, um, you could maybe do a long math problem. Uh, just somehow start using your brain in another way to where it is not thinking about the tinnitus. And she said, if you start doing that, pretty soon you're not going to notice the tinnitus anymore. And by gosh, she was right. Woo! I, you know, I only hear it from time to time. And I'm hearing it a little bit now only because I'm talking about it. Huh. All right, here we go. Let's get caught up. Um. Yeah, we do need to get rid of the globus. We are. We're going to get rid of Okay, Steve, can you get rid of that loser? Or Will, one, one of your two guys. Thank you for doing that. Um, all right, I want to talk a little bit about... I got to bring it up on my screen. When it's silent. It's when I have hit it. Okay, right. But now you know how to control it. And if you, if you want to... Um, Take that conversation off list. I can go into a little bit more detail, but it, but really, Steve, all you have to do is the next time you notice it, immediately do something different and start doing something that requires concentration. I mean, it could be something as easy as um, cooking something, you know, because cooking requires concentration. You know, you're measuring things or whatever. Whatever. I mean, just you just have to do something that re re gets your brain working on something. Simple as that. Um, uh, all right. And let's see here. Um, okay. I, well, you know what to do too. You, I just told you guys how to solve it. It's not a problem. I want to talk a little bit about um, this survey I did. I did a really random survey on Sunday in the newsletter. And I got the idea actually from our Zoom call, to be honest with you. And I kind of alluded that I just said I had a Zoom call or a video call with friends. And it was true. You're my friends. I don't I don't lie. I, although my I do tell little tiny white lies to Kathy sometimes just to get a rise out of her. You know, so I'm 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 mendacious with her. All right. Here we go. So I do this survey asking people if they would if they would be interested in um, me conducting video calls about a given topic, the call would never last more than an hour, and 
the call would be about, for example, I'll give you an example, for, like what I just did earlier, where today I'm going to talk about everything you need to know about building a covered front porch, you know, and then just like a regular lecture in a, in a classroom, you know, you, you would have, you, it would be pre-outlined, uh, you'd, you know, you'd have bullet points. It's just like a PowerPoint presentation. None of this is hard. Would probably take me 20 minutes to prepare. You know, and I have photos and blah, blah, blah. And you can drop photos in to the meeting, as you know, on on Zoom or Google Meet. So I, I do this, I do this uh, survey here. So here, here's the, um, I'll share the results because I think it's fascinating. First of all, you need to know this. Uh, I got quite a bit of feedback about Sunday's newsletter. It's a really interesting newsletter. My None of my newsletters are the same. If you don't already subscribe, I... I just urge you to do it because I think you'll what you what I try to do in the newsletter each week is I try to share a little bit more about myself. And I do that on purpose. And so you'll learn more about me than you do here in the live stream. I had um, almost 12,000 people open and read the newsletter. OK, that's really important to know. Twelve thousand. And it went out to over 25,000 people. Here's the first, oh, I, t I share that number for a reason. Only 44 people responded as of an hour ago. And I, I spent quite a bit of time in the newsletter explaining what, what, what it was about. And I needed their help. I need your help to make this happen. 44 people is all that responded? On a winter on a winter Sunday afternoon, I could understand if it was July Fourth weekend, but January thirtieth? Are you kidding me? Forty four people. So that to me that was a very that's the the most important piece of data. Only forty four people. First question: Would you be interested in participating in a live video call where I discuss one specific topic? All right, seventy two percent said yes. Uh, no was a very small percentage maybe 5% and 22% said maybe. Uh, would you be interested in this call knowing it would be recorded so you could watch it unlimited times in the future? All right, unlimited times. Meaning you don't have to take notes. That's what I said. You don't have to take notes. Just sit back and relax because you can watch it again. Good response. 95.5 said yes. A very tiny sliver said no. Very tiny sliver said maybe. About 2%. Uh, each of those two people. And then I said, what's the highest number of students you'd prefer in the class? And I gave them anywhere from 10 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50. Then I put the final choice was it doesn't matter since I can mute everybody. So there won't be any chaos. 54% said it doesn't matter. And then the next biggest one was 10 to 20 people. Then I asked them all the things they'd like to see. And that's, you don't need to know all that. But here's the big question. Here's the most important. Um, I said, what would you be willing to invest to have access either to each live video call or the recorded version? Um, you know, meaning, and then I, I, I gave price points, $10, 15, 20, 25 plus. And then I had one choice. I think the call should be free. 23% of the people said the call should be free. <laughs> 38%, actually 39% said the call should be $10. And then the rest were, you know, the next biggest one was $20. $20, uh, $20. So think about that. 23 and 39 is a big number, 23 and 32 percent So 62% aren't willing to give much of all for effort for this information. So, um, so I don't know whether I should do it or not. I don't know whether I should do it. My gut tells me, and then I asked them what their top three topics are. And that, that was kind of interesting. What was really fascinating about the topics that they shared, for example, like one person said bathroom remodel, luxury vinyl flooring, house insulation, um, bathroom, uh, here's one, wet basement walls, smelly drains, improving yard drainage. So they, they have a lot of really good topics. But what was surprising to me is that in, as I just kind of went through this, I would say 80% of the topics that they want me to talk about, I've already covered them on a website or I've already got videos about them. 
So I just thought, thought that was interesting that they're not going hunting for that information. All right, let me get back to see what, uh, they get caught up on these comments. Go Rams. <laughs> Give me a break. It's Bengals all the way. I, what a great game yesterday, the Bengals game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, you missed that survey. Interesting. Well, you can still take it, Lorene. Um, Steve wants to know, uh, is cedar wood best for building porches? Uh, cedar uh, uh, cedar here, um, American Eastern cedar or Western. Well, well, the Eastern cedar here in America that grows on the East Coast, that's the aromatic cedar. Uh, that's what people use for cedar closets, cedar chests. And, you know, moths don't like it, which is why people keep their woolen stuff so that the moths don't eat it. Western cedar, not aromatic. Western cedar... The trouble with cedar is that um, it's it's a it's not as dense as oak. It's it's a really for the most part it's kind of a light wood. Um, it's not. I, I wouldn't want to build anything structural out of it. But a lot of people like the way it looks. It has a really interesting kind of a rough grain. Uh, it has natural extractive chemicals in it that make it really resistant to weathering. Not perfect, but but it can resist weathering much more so than like spruce, pine, or fir, you know, which will rot right away. Uh, it's a, it's a beautiful wood. There's a lot, a lot of, uh, there was a big push back here, in, at least in the Midwest part of the United States back in the seventies. Um, many, many houses, uh, many condos used uh, cedar, rough, rough sawn cedar lap siding. You know, that, that was really popular here. It's not so much now, uh, but it's a good wood. I mean, it's a great wood. It holds paint really well if, as long as you paint it around all sides. So um, it's a good, it's a good, um, uh, it's a good thing. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, so T wants to know what is tinnitus. So tinnitus is the, um, it's a ringing that you, that a person like me hears in their head. It's, it's a, um, it's really actually hard to describe the sound. And at least with me, the intensity of the ringing can vary as much as from zero, which is like none, to on some days nine. And I've never, I've never kept a journal and I don't know what it's related to. I don't know if it's a uh, diet. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, and I don't know that anybody knows, but my guess is there have been studies, but it can be debilitating if you don't control it. Uh, I can tell you in the past when I did not know how to control it, when it gets up around eight or nine, it gets so bad that uh, I don't want to say it makes me sick, but I literally have to go take a nap to try to get rid of it. And that always helps. So maybe, maybe tinnitus is, um, could be related to stress, could be related to fatigue, um, could be a lot of things. Could be occupational, but but like I said, I now have it under control ninety eight percent of the time. And if you didn't hear that, if you if you got in late, you need to rewatch this live stream where I share how to, how to stop it. Yes. Um, Steve wants to know his wood. Got more expensive. Yes, yes. Wood actually, Steve. Right after the uh, the shamdemic started, <laughs> I'm not going to call it. It's the shamdemic. Uh, lumber, be because of the restrictions and the lockdowns and all that other crap that happened, that was unnecessary. Um, the lumber mills had two things happen. They, they <laughs> the lumber mills really got in trouble because they could not staff the lumber mills because of the restrictions. And then all these people in the United States <laughs> that all of a sudden were at home, <laughs> you know, twiddling their thumbs, you know, <whistles> you know, they saw, they looked around and went, wow, it's time to improve the house. And so home improvement went crazy, you know, and I should be paying more attention to this. I should have thought that through. Because um, if if in it would have been a really really smart move, I'm just telling you. In um, 
it would have been 2020. So in January of 2020, you should have bought Home Depot and Lowe's stock because later in the year when they reported their earnings, the price of the stock went through the flipping roof. Go look it up. Go, go look up Home Depot and go look up Lowe's stock price and chart it over the past five years. And, uh, and then what you should have done is you should have bought it in January of 2020, but then sold it probably, I don't know, last April or so <laughs> when you could see things were, you know, people had shot their wads, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, uh, here we go. So a lot of conversation in the chat about tinnitus. Lorene, you should try my idea, what, um, what, what I shared. It really, really worked for me. <laughs> yes, exactly. The pandemic. I hope you watched that video. I think I sent that to you. Um, really great video, man. The pandemic video. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, my kids and wife, will, Kathy, will tell you I should get hearing aids. I really don't want them. I um, really don't want them. <laughs> okay. Um, what else did I want to share? Um, we talked about unhappy man. We talked about the um, the survey. So, um, how is the porch changing in the wake of Amazon packages? Oh, that's a great question, Al. Uh, the um, well, I think what's happened is, you, you know, Amazon's tried to solve the porch pirate thing uh, by um. um by, you, you know, by letting letting people allow them to put them in garages. I don't know how that worked out. I, I don't know if it's, I don't track that. We don't have a problem here personally because uh, I live at way at the end of this road. There's, I'm at the end of the cul-de-sac. My house, you have to go down a hill. I mean, if you, if you, if you were a professional thief and you talk to them, they would say, Tim Carter's house, that is the worst house to try to steal something from because you are flipping trapped. It's like you're in, like in the old cowboy movies where the uh, the sheriff would try to chase one of the bad guys, the outlaws, into a box canyon. I mean, truly, my house is in a box canyon. If you, you know, you're not escaping. I mean, you're, you're <laughs> well, unless you want to go swimming. Uh, so, so I don't have the problem, but I, I, um, you know, what I think is happening, though, it, 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 with this whole porch pirate thing is the, the really good porch pirates, what they're doing is they're, I mean, the pros are probably, they are shadowing the UPS tri truck driver. They, they it, it, You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out what the guy's route is for the most part. And, and understand that I've talked to my driver a UPS is such a good company as is FedEx that they have computer programs. In other words, they know which packages are in the truck and a computer automatically creates the route that the driver is going to drive that day. Um, you know, so that the, so that they get the most packages delivered in the least amount of time for the least amount of fuel. In other words, they're, they don't want that truck to, to waste one minute driving and backtracking. So they minimize that. But even still, a if I was a professional package thief, I would probably go out kind of, uh, I, I would scope the easiest places to steal from. Uh, and then I would hang out and wait for the UPS truck to come or FedEx, you know, and just kind of leisurely follow them down a the street, you know, far enough back. So I'm just telling you, that none of this is hard. You know, thieves are somewhat smart. They're not all perfectly smart, but I don't think porch design is going to be modified at the end of the day to stop porch thievery. I can tell you that, you know, so, I mean, you could solve it so easily by just putting a lockbox, you know, just like the old, I mean, when I grew up on our porch, we had an insulated box that the milkman would put milk bottles in, for goodness sake. All right, so... So what's so hard about bolting a big box like a locker to your front porch? Literally, bolt it down. And and 
each morning it's unlocked. All right. And then um, when the UPS guy comes, he lifts the lid up, puts the packages in. As soon as he drops the lid, it locks. What's so hard about that? Nothing's hard about this. I don't know. What do I know? Uh, okay, let me get caught up. A lot of stuff here. Um, what ha St uh, Will wants to know what happened. To the I think that I think they're going to do the drone deliveries. Will um, I? I um, it's going to be in select markets. I mean, the biggest problem with the drone deliveries, when you think about it, is range. I mean, just think of if you know anything about airplanes and weight. You know the weight weight to lift ratio and I mean, how, I mean, this is a rhetorical question. I'm not a drone expert, but, but for the most part, I don't think these drones can stay up much more than 30 minutes. All right. And I know those are the battery power ones, but I'm sure they're going to have gasoline power ones or fuel power ones. But see, that would go against everything that Amazon stands for, right? <laughs> the last thing that Amazon would want to get caught would be using two cycle oil in their drones. Two cycle gasoline. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> But that's the only way in the short term that they're going to increase range. Uh, yes, Lorraine's right. Select major areas. Yeah, exactly. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did talk about climate change a month ago. Just so you know, I mean, on the record, climate is constantly changing. Uh, but us, man, we have like virtually nothing to do with it. And I have the proof of that. I I, I uh, talked to some neighbors. I, in the spring, I'm probably going to lead a, um, a really neat one-day field trip here in New Hampshire uh, to show people all of this local uh, um, glacial geology that, that that's right in front of them. They don't even know it. And when all of a sudden, when you absorb by that in your head, you go, holy tomato. <laughs> that's a lot of ice. And then, you know, and then, like I said, it, it came and went four times in the last two million years. And the only thing around were a few campfires. All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, let's get caught up here. Um, Will says they are getting into. The, yeah, exactly. The, the trains. Yeah, that's a big problem. Those trains in California, they're in a switching situation. You know, I was a, a conductor. So those trains are brought in because they have to break them apart and, you know, get them out to different places. And they're in a bad spot where uh, they, the, the trains are like down in a, a valley, like a man-made valley, and hardly anybody can see them. So the thieves are, no one can see the thieves breaking in. And the, and the just so you know, the police, it's really interesting about railroads. So So it's just like your own home in a way. Now, your home... You may have a burglar system and an alarm system that's tied into um, the police department and they police may come, but they may not because if they're busy in others. In other words, understand that burglary on the list of things that the police are dealing with each day, um, burglary is way down here. They, they, they don't care if burglars are breaking into your home. You know why? Do you know why they don't care? Think about it. Because of insurance, you're you're that your loss is covered by insurance. They don't care. And, and by the time they get there, the burglars are going to be gone. They're not going to catch them. Blah, 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 blah. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this. Um, so, so, this, so the railroads, that's private property. A lot of people don't know this. I mean, the, the right of way that the railroad tracks on, that's private property owned by the railroad. And you're not supposed to be on it. So, the police are not going to intervene even if they see somebody breaking in unless the railroad calls them and asks them for help. All right. Uh, Lorraine says, it was shocking to see the BBC don't argue about the pact being stolen from there. Uh, yes. We need porch dogs to greet the pirates. Yeah. Yeah. Porch dog. Alice got a great question. I need to put something in my mouth. I'm biting my cheek again. I have not solved that yet. Are you a fan of ICF, insulated concrete forms? The answer, that's a great question. Uh, the answer is yes. I have a column or two on my website about ICFs. 
uh, my neighbor, he happens to be a state highway patrolman. He lives about a half mile from me down the road. Uh, he used ICFs for his foundation. He actually did the foundation himself. Uh, it's, a, it's a long story. He was acting as a general contractor, but all of his subs, everybody got so busy, no one wanted to come and work. So he ended up pretty much, he ended up, um, he ended up putting in the foundation himself. He ended up um, doing all the framing. He did all the, uh, a lot of the outside carpentry. It's crazy what he did. I really handed it to him. Uh, anyway, crutch word. Uh, he, ah, uh, see, I even said, ah. Uh, the ICFs, I got photos on my website of his foundation, and it's a great system. It's really a great system, uh, especially like here in New Hampshire. Uh, they're strong. Um, it's a great system. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say it. I, I, I w probably though, if I was doing it, one of the things I really like, in lieu of the, uh, in lieu of that, and I, I haven't priced it. But there's a there's a, a system called Superior Walls, and there are different uh, franchises across the United States. And what Superior Walls are, it is a precast concrete wall that looks like, um, well, on the outside, it just looks like a regular concrete foundation. And uh, they have when they pour these in the factory, the concrete's poured under ideal conditions, and they include closed cell insulation in the, in the concrete. And they come and they, they have a crane and they just assemble your foundation a, a lot like a Lego, like a, like putting together Lego. So they, they, an average foundation they can easily place in a day and a very interesting system. Um, I, um, the biggest problem I have with the ICFs is that on the outside, you know, you have some detailing to do, so that the foam on the outside is not visible, you know, so you have to stucco it or whatever, um, you know, so that's, that's a little problematic. And on the inside, you, you should, you, you have to do something to do because that foam is flammable. So you, you know, you, you got to cover that up or because the last thing you want is that stuff to catch fire. Uh, the smoke created by that foam burning is highly toxic. So, but anyway, I like them. Um, all right. All right, here we go. Uh, let's get caught up. I love watching those revenge videos in two big packages. Yeah, I do too, uh, about the porch pirates. I, I like that a lot. Those guys deserve it. Uh, Lorraine says, I may have missed this, but how much snow? Did you oh, you didn't miss it at all. Um, well, it's really interesting. So I only got maybe five inches and they had predicted a lot more for me. Uh, Will, though, I'm sure. Uh, so, okay, Lorene, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for being here. Will got a lot more. Will got a lot more snow than I got. I think he got over 20 inches. Um, so, and he's only, you know, he's not that far west of me. I don't know. I mean, if I did the mileage thing, maybe, maybe he's 80 miles as the crow flies. But the snow can vary that much that, you know, very tight bands of, of the precipitation. Um Steve said, yeah, there you go, 18 to 23. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, Steve. Of course you had polar bears in England. Um, I mean, and, and you probably, I would also think um, you had mastodons, uh, saber-toothed tigers. All of those big animals were in the UK and England um, back just, um, uh, you know, 15,000 years ago because... Um, just so you know, this is kind of an interesting factoid. Let's go back 20,000 years from now. So 20,000 years from today, the ocean level all across the world was 400 feet lower than um, it is today. And I, I know that the depth of the English Channel, I, I'm just guessing, it can't be. I mean, there's got to be places where the English Channel is only 100 feet deep. I mean, I just, I'd have to look it up, but, but I'm just saying there have to be places in the English channel where when the ocean dropped down that, that someone could walk from present day London over to Paris with no problem. So that means that the animals could do the same thing and they could do it for thousands of years. 
not just a day or a week. That land bridge existed for a long time. But once um, the climate changed on its own uh, and um, things started to warm up, then the ice caps melted and the ocean levels started to go up. And that got cut off. So England and the UK became an island once again, giant island. Maybe we should do it. Maybe we should do a live stream about that one day. Uh, here we go, Charles. Great to meet you here. Uh, my previous house was constructed with foam block back in 2000. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's, I mean, it's good stuff. It just has never really caught on, I think, uh, for, for a number of reasons. I mean, it just, um, you know, when it comes to mechanics, like, for example, uh, installing uh, electric outlets and switches on exterior walls, it's not that easy. Uh, you know, because especially if you use this for um, the first floor level of the house, uh, if you're just using it for a basement, it's, it's not that bad. But it's just, it's it's like it's like Steve, if you came over here, if you came over here, um, like if you would have, well, actually, there's a video you should watch. Um, let me, um, actually, let me get it. Um, let me, I'm going to do this once again. I, I suck, you know, at being able to multitask. I'm going to get a video for you that shows you how easy it is. Install gradient tubing 24 on center. And remember, if you want to find any of my videos, the easy thing to do on YouTube is to always type the, the like subject, like drywall installation or drywall finishing, but always put my name after it. Put Tim Carter and you're going to get my video is going to come right to the top. So here it is. Here's the video I was looking for right at the flipping top. Um, so I'm going to go to this video and tape, paste it into the uh, the URL. You need to watch this video because uh, <laughs> anyway, this this video, Steve, shows you why in the United States we love, love, love using wood. <laughs> so imagine the, the ease that you see in this video of me working with this wood. Um, imagine it in the walls, because in the walls, now we wouldn't use trusses in the walls, but we just use a two by four that, that the thickness, that the width of the two by four, ha hang on, I'll, I'll tell you how many millimeters it is. So there's 25 um, millimeters to an inch, 25.4. So that means, uh, I don't know, 80 millimeters, 90 millimeters would be a two by four. Uh, three and a half inches. So three and a half inches, I think, because if it was four inches, that would be a, a hundred and one millimeters. So it's not that. So it's got to be 85 millimeters. That's our standard wall stud. Well, I mean, you can drill through that. It, it's like putting a hot knife through butter if you've got a sharp auger bit. So we can drill holes for electric cables till the cows come home. But uh, you watch this. Oh, I forgot to click the daggone thing. Um, oh, I did not watch that video about the UK toilet. Would you please share it again? Um, oh, daggone it. All right. Um, watch that video and about the, that's, that video was recorded at my daughter's new home and that house had, uh, floor trusses in it. And I'm working in the floor trusses that are, that support the second floor. That floor truss was about 20 maybe 24 inches high because it was full span. The, the, there's no bearing walls except at the end. So that truss was spanning about 28 feet. And, but look at all the room. You don't, I, I didn't draw one hole ever. I didn't need to. <laughs> um, Al says, um, with the race into electric vehicles, what challenges are folks going to have with the utility pole? Um, I think very little. I, I Al, here's what's happening. It's really kind of interesting. My daughter. So back, go back four or five years ago, and at least from what I remember, if you bought an electric vehicle, you had to put in a pan, a special panel, maybe 240 volts. It was expensive, you know, to, a special panel for the car. Blah blah blah. Well, my daughter and her husband purchased. Well, they leased. They did not want to buy it. Because of so, there's so much technology in the car, 
my son-in-law was worried that if it goes bad out of warranty, they would cost a fortune to get it fixed. I agreed with them. They, they leased about six months ago, a brand new Volvo XC90. And my wife and I, Kathy's, Kathy drives a Volvo XC90. Uh, it's, um, it's a 2005 model. They look, almost, it's like the look hasn't hardly changed at all. But anyway, my daughter's new Volvo, you're not going to believe this. It just plugs into a regular 110 volt wall outlet. Seriously. And I think what their plan is, I think the way they're going to get away with this, and let me tell you, here's what's happening. I may have shared this on a past live stream. Uh, right above me, I know you can't see it, just trust me, right up there on the hill right above me, uh, a neighbor, a new neighbor is building his home. It's a beautiful home, got a beautiful view. Uh, he is a consultant to the American auto industry, and his specialty is electric cars. And he must be doing really well, I mean, because he's building an expensive house. I don't care. I don't care how much money he has. I don't care how much money anybody has. I don't care. He told me I was talking with him this summer, and we became friends. He, he knew I was the Ask the Builder guy, and I had offered him. I said, if you have any questions about anything, I'm happy to answer them. And he, I asked him, you know, like I told you an hour ago, I said, I'm always interested in you. I want to know what you do. So I asked him, I said, hey, do you mind if I ask, what do you do for a living? He told me. And we got to talking and he said, you may not want to hear this. But within the next 10 years. So that would be 2031. He said, it's going to be very difficult for you to purchase a car or a light pickup truck that only has a gasoline engine. All right, so I believe him. I can just see it coming. You know, and there's actually a stock out there I bought. I'm a little underwater on it right now, but my son suggests I buy it. It's a company that makes the charging stations. And over the past, like, month and a half, they've gotten hammered, man. Their stock got beat up. It's a fantastic buy. I, I'm just, if you had a little bit of extra money right now, I'm telling. It's a long-term buy. You know, it's not not like you're going to make a huge amount of money in the next six months. But man, I'm going to talk to Kathy now. I'd like to dump a little bit more money into the stock because it's down pretty low. Anyway, oh hi there, Lorraine. Um, the answer to your question is so. So Al, here's the answer. The if you if you were to look at um, if you were to look at the consumption of electricity, and I'm talking about in non-peak times, all right? Uh, in other words, and I'm not saying don't go to Arizona or, you know, or Phoenix to do this in the summertime. <laughs> the, um, you know, because, for example, the electric usage there is really high to run all that air conditioning and they run their air conditioners all night long. All right. So, but here in, in normal times, just in normal times, think about it. Think of what, if, if you were managing a power plant that, that makes electricity and, and you're here on the East Coast, all right, and you graphed electrical usage, meaning they, they know how much electric's being consumed. Well, what starts to happen at about nine o'clock at night? You know, the electric, the demand starts to go down. I mean, and by, I don't know, one, two in the morning, I mean, it's bottomed out. I mean, everybody's asleep. Not everybody, but many people are asleep. Many businesses are closed. Um, you, you know, the, the restaurants are closed. They don't have their big deep fryers on. Um, blah, 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 blah. I could go on and on and on. You get the picture. So what's happening is what the push is going to be. And, and most people are at home. They're sleeping what a perfect time to charge their cars. I think what you're eventually going to see, if, if that technology isn't already built into the car, it will be whereby the car will automatically charge itself overnight while you're sleeping at the time when the grid is down at its lowest level. So there's, there's tons of capacity in the grid as long as you use the grid at two in the morning, you know, so 
that's 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 what I feel. All right, here we go. Um, all right, thank you for that video, Steve. I'm going to actually click it right now so it opens up. Uh, no, 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 no. Cancel. Uh, no, no, no. Don't want to do that. If I if I I almost uh, killed the live stream. <laughs> Electric cars, what could, well, just, well, wait a minute, Steve. Uh, go, um, go, you love YouTube. So have you, this is a rhetoric. this is a question. Have you watched any of, you know who Jay Leno is? That, that uh, comic that hit, that used to, um, you know, he, he was the host of, uh, I don't know, The Tonight Show or for a long time. He made huge money and he's a good guy. So have you ever watched, you know, his hobby is collecting cars. So he's got a lot of videos on YouTube about the cars he collects. Go look at one of his, the cars he likes the most was an electric car made around 1900. Just type into YouTube, um, Jay Leno um, electric car. And there's a video of him driving it around. So the technology has been around for a long time. Uh, yeah, Jay Leno, good guy. I, boy, I've he's got some cars I would love to have. Oh my gosh. Um, Oh, there you go. Top Gear. Great show. What a great show. I'm having fun on today's live stream, by the way. I don't know if you are. I'm having a blast. <laughs> um, let's see. Here we go. I'm going to click, just so you know, Steve, I'm going to click the toilet video at the end of the live stream because that'll kill it. Uh, I'll, I'll be out of here. I'll click it. That's how I'm going to end the live stream. <laughs> uh, let's see. Al says, saw the video and love the floor truss system you used. Incredible. How much more would it cost for a floor truss system when compared? I, I don't know. Um, it's a moving target, Al. I, you have to just price it. It depends on a lot of factors. It depends on how close you are to the to the plant that makes them, uh, the price of the lumber. Uh, I, I mean, the, the manufacturing of the trusses is really simple, um, really easy. It's There's a couple of videos online. I think I actually put one on my website that actually shows two guys building floor trusses in a factory, how they have a jig already set up. And these all these guys do, man, is they just throw this lumber, the, the cut pieces into the jig. Um you know, I mean, it doesn't take long. I mean, like a minute. And then they, um, they've they got this, those steel plates with those very sharp points. And they put those on the places and just lightly tap them so they don't move. Uh, and then a roller comes along and rolls it. And then they flip it over to do the same thing. It's just pretty amazing. Uh, it's, they can make those floor trusses really quickly. But as far as the cost, I, you know, here's one thing I don't like about the eye joists. This is a really interesting story. Um, really, Top Gear got canceled. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that was a great show. I, well, I, I know they did get canceled. They start they started a new show. I forget what it was called. And, and I, my son loved Top Gear. And he we, we started watching the new show. Um, I don't know if it's still going on. Um, anyway. Those guys did lots of funny things. <laughs> uh, oh, I was doing, you know, I, I think I've told you, I draw plumbing isometric drawings. I draw riser diagrams for people. And um, about a year ago, I was doing a drawing and, you know, and I'm lucky. I, I get to see the blueprints and I, um, this is actually a great story. Uh, I, I'm looking at the blueprints and I, it clearly says they're using eye joist. And so what an eye joist is, it's uh, they, it looks just like a steel eye beam and they take a, I don't know, like a half inch thick piece of oriented strand board. And that's the, that's the joist. And then on the top and bottom, they glue, um, you know, like a, um, well, it's an inch and a half wide and it's maybe, uh, I don't know, almost an inch and a half thick, uh, you know, they glue that member on so that it, it's a place for the, the subfloor to sit and for the drywall to be screwed to the ceiling below. Well, they have really strict guidelines about where you can drill holes and, and how big the holes can be and 
and where you are not allowed to drill holes, not even a small hole. And typically, when the end of the eye joist sits on a wall, the bearing wall, and you go away from the bearing wall three or four feet, that's that zone, no holes, man, no flipping holes, not allowed to drill. <laughs> this architect draws this plan with um, these eye joists. And, you know, I have to look at the plans and I, I always try to figure out how am I going to get that toilet pipe? I got to get that toilet pipe down to the flipping basement. And in this, and then in this particular instance, there was only one way, only one way. And you had to go through the eye joist. And so I told the homeowner, I just said, I hope you haven't, I hope this house isn't built yet. He goes, no, it's not. I said, well, you got a problem, Commander. And uh, I told him what it was. I said, you're going to have to use floor trusses. You cannot, you cannot do this. Or you're going to have to, you're going to have to figure out a way, or you're going to have to put a soffit in below so that you can get this pipe somewhere else. And he didn't want to do a soffit, you know, down below the ceiling. And that's just a really good instance of, of why I love those floor trusses so much. Because, oh my goodness, there's so much room to run everything. They're just, they're just wonderful. The eye joists, I would never use them. I would never, ever use eye joists on one of my jobs. Never, never, never. Here we go. The link I sent you, have a look at the rest of his videos. I will. He's a popular plumber, and that was my fan about, but thanks. But the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay. I will. I'm absolutely going to watch that. Um, the Grand Tour. There we go. Yes, exactly. That was the name of the show. Um, wonder what bad thing. Well, you'll have to let me know uh, in an email what bad thing that <laughs> Rob did. <laughs> Must have done something bad. Got sent to the corner. Uh, let's see. What else? Um uh, I don't know. I I don't want to say I'm out of things to talk about. I've always got something to talk about. Uh, but, but right now I'm drawing a blank. Um, oh, we have, I'll just share this building, and uh, not really home improvement related. But if my weather app is right, they're not always right. Because as we can tell from the, um, how they, at least in my area, they missed the forecast. But I was happy. I was happy they missed it. I didn't want to deal with 18 inches of snow. Um, so Will and I are going to get hammered again, maybe in just a couple of days. Um, it says right here that on, um, Thursday, like at noon, our time, it's it would have started a little earlier, but Thursday noon, all overnight, all day Friday, uh, potentially we're getting 13 inches of snow. We'll see bad thing about it is if this forecast is right, it's going to be concrete, white concrete coming out of the sky. It's going to be a wet, heavy snow. Bad. That's bad. Everything about that is bad. <laughs> All right. Great question, Steve. How much weight is a floor joist supposed to hold in the U.S.? The last time I checked the code, and remember, the code is a set of minimum standards. Minimum is the minimum weight, including what they call both dead and active weight. Dead weight and active weight is 40 pounds per square foot. All right. So uh, I know that's not, um, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do the the, the conversion. I, I apologize. So, well, I can do the pounds because uh, there's 2.2 pounds in a kilogram. So that would be like 18 kilograms, roughly 18 kilograms per square foot. I don't know. Um, I apologize. I don't know what a, I don't know how you would call out a square foot there in, in the UK. I don't know how you do that. Um, anyway, turns out it's pretty much weight. So think about it. So think about here, here in the US, think about a room that's 10 foot by 10 foot. So in your, in the UK, that would be a room that's a little over nine, uh, three meters by three meters. So not a big room. So here in the U.S., that floor minimum has got to support 4,000 pounds. It's a lot of weight. 
All right. 4,000 pounds. I mean, that's a ton. I mean, and just think, you know, to put that into perspective, think how, think what your average furniture weighs, you, you know, like in your living room, you know, a couch, some chairs, a couple of tables. I mean, what, what, what's all the, what's all the furniture weigh in a typical room? I mean, I don't know, not much, 400 pounds, 500 pounds. And, um, and, and for example, like bookcases, like you might go, well, like in a house, you might see bookcases and books are heavy, but you typically find those on a wall. And if it's a, if it's, if that wall is perpendicular to the run of the floor joists, you know, it's typically on an outside wall or maybe an inside wall next to a, a, a beam underneath. So th those books don't even come into play. It's not that much weight. Um. Yeah. Yeah. What heavy snow bad. Uh, we know square feet. Don't worry. I'm old enough. <laughs> I, I know. I just it's really kind of, you know, what I love about you being here is you um, I, I don't really think much about how, you know, builders and, 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 and people in the UK do that conversion. Like in other words, we, I mean, we just call it per square foot or, or whatever. So I just don't know what that, I would think maybe you just do it by per square meter would be a guess. And so that the number is much lower because, you know, here in America, a square yard, which is close to a meter, it's not perfect, you know, would be nine square feet, you know? So in, in our case, you know, we would say, well, uh, a floor needs to support minimum um, about 400 pounds, which would be, uh, I know, <laughs> which would be uh, 180 kilograms, approximately 185 kilograms per square meter. So anyway, just, um, but you know, you got, you rattle that off your head or the builders like nothing because that's a common, you just, it's your, it's your lexicon. Um, all right. Um, yeah. 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 And Lorene's correct. Um, so there was a craze here in, in America, Steve, back in the seventies, I think it stretched into the eighties of waterbeds. And um, he, the trouble is, here's the trouble with, that's such a great question about floor joists, by the way. I'll spend just a little bit more time on it. Uh, the, once again, remember I said the code's a set of minimum standards. I can build a floor here in America to, to the code, to, to exactly the minimum code. And especially within the code, not only is that requirement for the 40 pounds a square foot, they also have span tables. Meaning the code says, if you're going to use two by eight floor joists, 16 on center of this species wood and of this grade of lumber, it's very specific like that. I'll talk and that, can, that answers your other question. Then the maximum span of those joists is going to be X, whatever that distance is. Understand that I could build the floor to that spec and it's going to pass the code. The inspector is going to say, okay. It passes. But if you and I go upstairs and start jumping on that floor, you're going to feel like we're on a trampoline. I mean, the floor is going to like, whoa, like it's going to sp be springy. And, you know, most people don't like that, but it meets code. So I hated that. So I always overbuilt my floors. Now, in other words, I always overbuilt them because I did not want those floors bouncy at all. All right, so here we go. What wood do you use for forages? Well, great question. It depends on the region of the United States. Um, for example, uh, in where I lived in Cincinnati, we had great access to the south, just south of us. Uh, so the forests that were in uh, with Georgia, uh, North Carolina, um, Mississippi, Alabama, um, they all had southern yellow pine grown there. Southern yellow pine is an incredibly strong lumber. It, it's like the one just, the only one stronger um, in the softwoods. So forget about hardwoods, forget it, because no one can afford to use oak or other hardwoods for floor joists. I mean, it's just too expensive. So in the softwoods, the only one that's stronger would be Douglas fir. And Doug, you're, you're only going to really pretty much get on the west of the Mississippi River. Uh, you, you know, you can special order it if you've got a lot of money and get it brought in. But most lumber yards east of the Mississippi, most, uh, I don't know about L Lorene up in Wisconsin and Minnesota. They they may have access to Doug fir, 
from Canada. But anyway, Southern Yellow Pine. Wow. It's a great, and it's affordable. I mean, you have to understand here, Steve, in America, uh, trees are just a crop. It's no different than growing corn or soybeans or potatoes. It's just a crop. The only trouble is it takes 20 or 30 years for, for the crop to mature. Whereas corn, I don't know, corn grows in a, you know, 140 days or 20 days, whatever. From it's, Anyway, you get my point. In other words, the, the tree, the, the lumber companies, the, you know, like Weyerhaeuser and, and uh, uh, Georgia Pacific, they, they all get it, man. So they, I mean, they're planning, new, in other words, this year, they're going to plant a, an area, they're going to cut and then a clear cut an area, a forest, and then they're going to replant and, and they won't be back there until, uh, I don't know, 2050, maybe, you know, I mean, that's okay. They know that, you know, and they know it'll be the next generation in the lumber company that'll cut the trees down, but that's how the, it's just a crop. All right. Um, here we go. Um, I wish we would go back to the old system. Yeah. A lot of things would be great if we went back to the old ways. Now, things that you need to think about is deflection bounce. Yes, exactly. We just talked about, is there any jobs you can do without getting inspection? Um, yeah, here in America, uh, like exterior painting, um, minor interior things inside, what you what they typically want inspected, and and it's not a bad idea. I'm not against inspections, is when you start to do major alterations, like if you're doing structural work, like if you're going to tear a wall out, if you're going to um, put in, if you're going to relocate electricity, if you're going to mess with the plumbing system, um, those things should be inspected uh, because the trouble is we have so many bad contractors here. I mean, the, the problem is, is that we also have some in some, not all, inspectors that are bad. And it, it's just... I just beat on it all the time in my newsletter. I talk about how people need to get educated themselves and they need to inspect things themselves. You know, they need to stop hoping everything's going to be right. Um, all right. Uh, so that, um, so, so there's a lot you can do yourself, even roofing to a degree. They, a lot of places want you to get an inspection for the roof because they want to make sure that a, a low quality, and once again, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't come into play for you in the UK, because I think in the UK, Steve, I can't even, from what I get from the people, other people and builders I've talked to over there, they, they wouldn't even tolerate the type of shingles we put on here. I mean, you put on real roofs in the UK, but over here, asphalt shingles, they dominate the market. I mean, it's, they probably make up 85% of the market. I think I, I've got that spec. Whoa. I don't want that thing to fall to the ground. Uh, I, I, I've got it in my book somewhere, but I, I forget it. But I think it's roughly 85% of the market here in America is asphalt shingles. And and what happens is you don't want to put too many of those on your roof. I mean, in the old days, you, they, you weren't allowed to put more than three. But that's, what, that's back when the shingles weighed 240 pounds a square. A square is 100 square feet, or in, in your case, so nine, nine square meters. Uh, because they, the shingles weighed 250 pounds uh, per square. Well, now, and I've got that in this book. I've got that in the book. Guess what the shingles weigh now? The shingles don't weigh 100 or 240 pounds a square. They only weigh, I don't know, 180 pounds a square. So where's that extra 60 pounds? Well, it used to be the asphalt they put in the shingles. All right. So anyway, a um, lot, of, lot, of, lot of stuff. So. All right, I am going to uh, head out of here. I'm going to go watch that. Uh, I'm going to go watch the, um, let's see if I can copy that. I've got a little button here. I've, I haven't clicked this in a while. Try and, oh, uh, uh, slow down. YouTube, I'm trying to see if I can copy that. Uh, oh, come on. I'm trying to see if I can copy Steve's, um, daggone it. Everything is moving around. Um, oh, look at this. I did not know. Uh, no, I cannot copy it. All right, so um, I can pin some of these. I need to pay attention more to the controls. Um, all right, so let me uh, go down here. Go Rams, go Rams. I'm going to get rid of that message. <laughs>
Al, maybe we need a little side bet going here, all right, for the uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> here we go. Steve's got a great question. What would happen if someone built a porch or something and didn't get inspection and got court without any liability issues? Uh, got caught. I'm sure that's what you meant, got caught. Um, what can happen here is it can get a little ugly. <laughs> so the inspector, this is where it's really dangerous if you're doing... For example, if you're doing interior work and let's say you're doing an interior model, I'll give you, this is actually a good example. You're doing an interior model. You've changed a bunch of electric. Uh, you're, you're doing, you're remodeling your kitchen. You're putting in a new kitchen. You're putting in $50,000 worth of new cabinets and granite countertops, maybe 70000 and um, you've put in all kinds of electric. You had to change the plumbing. You had to move the vent pipe. And then you're painting. You're, you're like the last couple of days. And the, the inspector knocks on your door and says, we know, you, um, we know you just did this kitchen. We, we got a, somebody ratted you out. And um, I need to see... I need to see everything that's behind the walls. <laughs> yeah, that's happened. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine tearing the kitchen apart so that he could see that you did everything right? So my my um, my suggestion would be is if you're going to take a shortcut like that, um, man, videotape everything. Like before, like after all the electric's in, really great video, talking it through. Here I am. I'm standing to the right of where the kitchen sink will be. Really great shots. Here's all the cable staples. I use the right gauge of wire, blah, 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 blah. In other words, tape everything. Maybe, maybe that will get you out to where you don't have to tear things apart. You'll still have to get the permit and you'll probably pay a penalty, but you don't have to tear everything apart. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to try. Steve, I'll tell you one thing I'd appreciate in case it doesn't work. You've got my email address. Could you, if it's not too much trouble, could you send that UK toilet URL to me in my, um, in my email? Because I'm going to try to click this. I hope it works, uh, but there's no guarantee. And then I'll watch it right afterwards. I am out of here. We've been on almost an hour and a half. Crazy. Seems like 10 minutes to me. Uh, had a great time. Uh, tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow. Don't want to miss it. I'm going to be talking about this big time. I, I teased you this last week. Here, I'll just give you another quick tease. Look at that, man. It lights up. Uh, I'm trying to get it to where you can read it. I don't know. It's not working really well. I guess it's too dark here. I don't know. Anyway, digital tape recorder. Pretty amazing. You're going to really like this one. And very affordably priced. And I'm going to turn my computer off and because I think it's still got some latency in it. Get the RAM memory up to speed. Get it refreshed. Uh, oh, and last thing. I have told you a month ago that things were happening here at the house that would allow me to get out of here, get out of this environment and um, set myself up with a much better background and buy a new high definition camera, not this crappy 14 year old technology I'm using now, seriously. The camera right up here is a built-in eyesight camera on my iMac and my iMac is 12 years old. So the camera's got to be 13 years old. And we're going to have a lot better video quality. Uh, I don't know how I'd be able to do demos without having a videographer here. So, But at least we're going to have a nice better background and better video and better lighting. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Thank you for sending that in the, uh, in the uh, email. Have a great night, Steve. Thanks for being here. And I will, Lorreen, thanks for being here. Will, Al, Josh, if you're still here, uh, had some new people today and that's great. Um, so uh, I am going to right now, 
try to click Steve's, uh, there it is, um, that URL and see what happens. And then I'm going to get out of here. All right. Thanks so much. I'm Tim Carter. You've been watching Ask the Builder. And I hope I didn't lose another subscriber today, but you never know. If so, I feel it's their loss, not mine. But I value you. But I think you're smart enough to know, you know what, you can, you're willing to put up with a little bit of me to get the information that might save you a bunch of time and money. We'll find out. And as Kenny Chesney says in his famous hit song, hit song, only time will tell, but it ain't talking. I'm Tim Carter. Been asked the builder. See ya. <laughs>